On today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny, what to do with the deck. We'll give you some ideas on how to create an awesome backyard escape. Plus, pack it up or put it back. Ideas on what to do with some old suitcases. Ornate heat. What shall be done with this relic of a heater? Plus, what can we churn out of an old butter churner? And a hopeless basement or a whole new space to play? We will talk about it. Also, what can we do with these old sewing machine drawers? It's all coming up on today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. You there? There we go. That's us. <laughs> Here we are. I was ready today. I you just were. I was just like I hit I hit it ready to go and I didn't know what to say. I'm like, yep, yeah, that, that's our uh, our show. <laughs> uh welcome to Junkin' with Jenny. Uh Tony and Jenny Brisky joining you once again and uh hello everyone on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live. We're, uh, we're going to start doing this on Facebook Live every week. Okay. We do the show typically for everyone who's tuned in uh, Thursday nights around 8, 8.30 Central, depending on when we can get the munchkins into bed to do the yes. show. <laughs> but that's the average time to, to set your mental DVR to show up on our uh, our facebook page uh to uh to watch the show so uh so welcome everybody <laughs> uh and on today's episode of jackie and jenny as you heard all those things we're going to be talking about and i know last week we did this live on facebook we did um but what I, we're going to do this week is going to be a little more interactive okay in terms of the stuff we're going to talk about and the objects we're going to take a look at and uh, what we're going to get comments on and whatnot but i want everybody out there to participate as well mm -hmm. So as we go through the, uh, the objects and the spaces that we're going to discuss here on the show, uh, what I want you guys to do out there is to participate by uh, commenting uh, as well. If you feel so ambitious, if you can find a quick picture or anything of an example of something you see out there on Pinterest or whatnot and want to share it and say, hey, this would be kind of a cool thing. Or if you've done something yes. with one of these objects. You could you could do that as well. Share with us. And share with us. In fact, I may even be able to, uh, I'm doing this live as I go right now, but I may even be able to, I can. Um, Show their pictures that they share them? I can do it through the computer because I added a little thing to my computer here today, an extra application that I can pull our desktop feed from. And uh, yeah, I'll be able to show uh, your guys' graphics if you got anything to share. Okay. So a little extra thing we can do uh, here on the, uh, the show tonight. So welcome. Thank you for joining us, uh, everybody. Uh, hello from Baltimore, San Diego, Pittsburgh, Iceland, Iceland uh, is yes. uh, watching us today. <laughs> um, so thank you guys uh, so much. Uh, I want to talk about, first of all, uh, our uh, creative juice of the week. Yes. That's getting us through this show and, and, and helping Jenny with her, her camera shyness. It, I, it, it, yeah. it, it's so much better being on camera when we have, have a beverage, isn't it? It is. It's a little bit easier for me. <laughs> I, I had finally gotten used to after, you know, four years of being mm -hmm. on the air with you. Yeah. I could do that, but now I get to be on camera and I'm like, oh shit, I got to start over. <laughs> So, so our, our creative juice this week is uh, from St. Francis Winery out there in California. It's a Sonoma Valley winery. It's their Merlot. Um, it's really good stuff. And uh, go ahead and have a sip and, and, and tell me everything you're picking up out of it. Okay. I'm picking up a lot of cottontails. And I'm kidding. I'm just... I, I don't do that. I just go, I like, I don't like. You know what? Every now and then I'll drink a wine and it automatically makes me think of a food that I want, mm -hmm. you know, because I just, it, it would go well. And this makes me crave one of the steaks that you make that has the blue cheese on top with the cherry yeah. sauce. It would be perfect for that. I could see that working really well as a good pairing with this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great all around red wine. And like I said, holidays are coming up. This would be a great one, you know, for folks who are maybe not even so much into red wine. Mm -hmm. or Because we all have those folks in our family. I go, I, I'm not the, the reds. And they may have just had a bad red wine. This is a guaranteed, it's going to be good. Yeah. You know, as guaranteed as, as wine goes. But it really is. It's a solid wine. It's one wine drinkers are like, non-wine drinkers are like. It pairs well with pretty much anything you'd think of pairing a red wine with. Right. You know, meat, chicken, uh, steak, ham, Christmas foods. Mm -hmm. This is a good Christmas. I mean, it's good all year round wine, but it's a good one when you're trying to have a bottle there on the table. Mm-hmm. 
at the holidays. So St. Francis uh, Winery, you can uh, probably find it in your liquor store, but uh, if you go to uh, their website, uh, they have a, a special for you right now. If you use code Jenny at uh, stfranciswinery.com, you get uh, shipping included. So it's not bad. No, that's a good deal. I can, mean, I would have to say if I were cooking dinner, I, I would be drinking it while I'm cooking. I don't think I would share because it's that good. I would have probably finished it before the cooking was done. And then it's yeah. like, oh, did we get two bottles so we can open <laughs> one during dinner? Because right. I, I enjoy cooking for like hours on end. But uh, take advantage of that. Let them know you heard about us by using that code there. Um, and uh, save yourself some money on your wine. And uh, and uh, there you go. Get uh, get your shipping included. StFranciswinery.com to take advantage of that. Uh, get your shipping included if you're going to order up. Thank you for being our uh, creative juice yeah. uh, of the week, you guys. It's, uh, it's good stuff. Okay. Um, we have a lot of stuff to talk about on the show today. We have... A project that we're going to talk about a lot more in depth on a coming episode, but I do want to talk about it briefly today. Um, and I want everybody out there who's watching, uh, if you have uh, thoughts, uh, feedback, maybe you have done this or thinking about doing this, um, you know, give us your feedback yeah. in the comments section. We can see them all as, as we get here and, and do the show. We got Phoenix tuned in. India, or is Indiana? Indiana. Damn, I thought India. I'm like, <laughs> well, that's new. I don't think we've had an India. <laughs> Pretend you're from India today, Tanya. <laughs> um, uh, Texas, yeah. Fresno, Seattle. Um, this is, can I show the picture? You can show the picture. Okay. It is not completely finished yet. It's not completely finished yet. But this has been something that Jenny has been wanting to do for a long time. I've been wanting to do this for at least two houses. Mm -hmm. And I just finally got around to doing it. I felt confident that I could handle it on my own. And so I did. And this is creating, it's it's a faux beam, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's show. It's a box beam. A so for People that don't understand what that means is where you take three pieces of wood and you essentially make a U shaped out of it and you can attach it directly to your ceiling by screwing into a two by four that's attached to your ceiling or in this case we had a it wasn't a cased opening but it was an opening between our kitchen and our hearth room and it's mm -hmm. 16 foot long and um it was just sheet rocked and it's uh about five inches wide so i thought we'll just put a beam up there and make it look like it's uh you know a structural beam that's kind of dividing mm -hmm. the space and that's that's what i've wanted to do since we moved into this house but i've been wanting to add beams to a house since mm -hmm. forever i mean that's just always been something I've wanted to do and I finally attempted it. And we're going to be doing this here mm -hmm. uh, and also there's a couple other places and, and when we do the full project we'll do a full segment on it. Yeah. Talking about how we or how really you uh, have <laughs> done this. I, I did the whole thing all by myself. I even hung she it. Did. Hung it all by myself. That's why I'm drinking because I'm sore. I, I My neck hurts and I was screwing in over my head and it was really attractive. But. It's good to have excuses. But it's... Um, yeah. But no, seriously, I was down in, in, in my, uh, my the other studio office next door today and I hear just boom, bang, bang, go. <laughs> and, and, and normally I'd be like, I'll go up and help her. But I was extremely busy. Yeah. <laughs> so And I was impatient. I had yeah. just gotten them to look the way I wanted them. And, yeah. and I actually put them together in separate pieces. Mm -hmm. You can make them the full U-shaped box beam and then attach it mm -hmm. as one thing. But I thought I'd have better luck getting it just right. And things aren't exactly square. Yeah. And, and this was my first beam. So I just actually did it piece by piece. You did. And and you distressed it and all that. And, and we will talk about mm -hmm. how you distressed it and the the tactics you used and the uh, everything you did yeah, in great detail on an upcoming episode of the show. But I wanted to just touch on that because I think it's really neat how it's coming along. I think it, I was I was amazed when I walked upstairs and they're all up. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> then I'm looking around like on the floor because I'm expecting to find you like behind the couch or something. Broken like, glasses. I didn't break any glasses no. in the hanging of this beam. No, I was, I was impressed. Ankle. It was very, no, it was very close to the kitchen. Stuff could have gotten broken, but nothing got broken. Yeah. It looks cool. I like it. It's aged. It looks, you know, it, it looks really neat. So, like I said, we'll, we'll get into a greater detail <laughs> on this. If you want, if you're listening to the audio version of the uh, the podcast, which a majority of you are, um, you can see this video uh, on our website here. If it's not there yet, it will be soon at uh, junkinwithjenny.com. 
com, uh, and we have a video version of the podcast that we post up there, so you can see all of the things that we talk about. Um, we try and describe them as best we can. It's something I, I think I need to get better at is we do this show because we're always it's it's a very visual show. Yeah. But I like it because I've always thought it'd be fun to listen to HGTV as I drive. Sure. So I, I got to think more of like I have to really describe everything. Well, and to, to can, paint the picture more than just look at this, it, it, you know, <laughs> and, and people, if they're like me, I'll mm-hmm. get an idea and then I will go research it later anyway, yeah. when I have a chance. So if, if the yeah. idea is out there, you kind of get those wheels turning anyway. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. We will discuss this on, maybe next week or we, we have a lot more to do. Maybe next following. It'll be soon. Next probably. Whenever we, you have a day to help me, because the other yeah. beams are about 10 foot okay. tall and way up there and I can't do it myself. Before Easter. Is when we'll be doing that. No. <laughs> Probably within the next three to four episodes is yeah, what I would guess. I would so, think so. Uh, be sure to uh, be tuning in for that. So anyway, that is that project. Let's go to uh, one of our first submissions. And the way that this works uh, is very similar to the other shows that we do, where you guys submit your questions, your uh, comments, uh, and, and, and ask for some feedback. Uh, but with this show here at Junkin with Jenny, what you do is you submit a, a picture, hopefully, if you have one, um, uh, do your best, uh, or at least a very good description of what you're wanting some feedback mm-hmm. on, uh, whether it be an object that you have and you don't know what to do with, or a room, a space you want some ideas on, and then we go to work from there and give you some ideas uh, and feedback on that topic. And as we're doing this show now live, on Facebook Live, uh, you'll probably get feedback from a bunch of strangers all over the world as well. So I think the more people involved in the conversation, mm-hmm. the more ideas and the better. Yeah, it is. It, so it's, it's pretty cool. That's why we're doing this thing live because it really lends itself to doing this thing uh, live and, and for the, the fun interactive uh, part of it. So let's go to uh, these. I like these quite a bit. This is... Uh, do you recognize these? Yeah, I, mean, I know exactly. Do you know what they are? I know exactly what they are. I'm going to ask our listeners if they know and our viewers if they know what they are. On screen, what we have here is is two fairly thin drawers. Now, they, they look reminiscent of card cabinet uh, mm-hmm. drawers. They're not. They're not. They are not. But if you... Once I, I say what they are, they're a little bit kind of rounded on the front. They're not quite as deep as you get with a card cabinet at a, uh, a library back in the day, um, but they're about that that size. And I see these at antique stores a lot, or I see the the shelving and the, the table that they belong to mm-hmm. kind of in broken down bits and pieces quite frequently. And, and when I saw this, I thought, that's a great idea. We should get some of these, uh, more of these, because I like what you've actually done with one of them. <laughs> Thank um, you. What we see on camera right now, if you're watching uh, and if you're listening, is these are, are the shelving units from below an old Singer sewing machine table. They're the drawers. The drawers, yes. And uh, we don't have a picture to show you where they used to go on no. there, but you had the sewing machine table, mm-hmm. and then on the, each of the sides, there was two drawers mm-hmm. that hang down. And, you know, things happen to the sewing machine tables or they've been, you know, cut to fit a new sewing machine. Anyway, a lot of times the drawer units survive Mm -hmm. and they may even be with the actual support shelf that they came with or they may be on their own individually. They're great little boxes just to do things with. And, um, you know, I can find 101 different uses mm-hmm. for them, but do you have a picture of what we did with ours? I do. Um, okay. And I want to talk about that, and I'll show that here in just a second. The, another thing that I see quite a bit with these things is, is the broken down sewing machine tables. Sure. Where, and I bet a lot of people have these things where, well, that was my, that was my grandma's sewing machine. Yeah. And now it's in my basement, my mm-hmm. dark, dank basement, or it's in my attic, and it's just sitting there. It doesn't work. I'm never going to get it to work again. The cost to repair it would be insane. But the whole thing just sits there, and you're like, I can't get rid of it. It was my grandma's or whatever. Yeah. And it just sits. And then it has the sewing machine on it, or you know, a lot of them they flipped in words mm-hmm. as well. But it just becomes a piece where it's like, what? do you do with it and if it's never going to function again Mm -hmm. in all reality i think that's where it's a good time to admit well if we broke this down Mm -hmm. could we still you you can still get the memories out of it and you can still celebrate what it was 
and 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 get a, a new use out of it. And that's mm-hmm. where I think this is a really neat thing to do because so many of those are just sitting there dying, and they then are. eventually another generation gets it or whatnot. And it's like I think it was my great grandma's, and then it's just let's toss it. Yeah. Before that happens, <laughs> take it apart. Use the parts like this because they're really neat. Here's an example of what Jenny did with a, uh, a sewing machine drawer just like this. And this is uh, in one of our, our bathrooms, actually. Did you, you stained this, right? No. Uh, really, this, it came like this. This is original. Okay. This is the original wood or was it stained by someone else? No, this is how it came no on kidding. the sewing machine. Oh, wow. So that really stayed nice, dark, rich color. A lot of times they used really good oak. Mm-hmm. And by that, I mean some of the antiques you see in antique stores or flea markets, they have what's called tiger oak. And there's kind of this, you know graining that's lighter and it's almost giving it a almost tiger stripe two-tone kind of look and this drawer happened to be tiger oak and it was stained you know back when the the table was new and it hadn't been painted hadn't been distressed hadn't been anything and i just thought the wood was so gorgeous that i hung it sideways on the wall so basically it's like a little planter under a um antique window Mm -hmm. and put some greenery in it and it you know hangs above i think um above the the toilet in that bathroom but you can use it you know as storage you hang it on the wall and you've got like a little cubby or you can hang it with the opening towards you and have like a little shelf Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it works perfectly. Yeah. And if you have a couple of these things, you can make a wall with a couple of them in there. Oh, yeah. I would stick with fake greenery in there. I don't know that I'd, I'd actually, unless you have like a nice, I suppose you could do a, a, you could do a, a cactus. protective, you know, thing for the, I just, I would be concerned about the moisture getting into the, the wood and things uh, of that yeah, nature. Yeah, you would want to protect yeah. it because... Um, it's, they don't make things like this anymore. No. You can't go to the store and just get a new one. And yeah. the thing, you know, that I loved most about it was, like I said, the graining on it, the mm-hmm. originality. And, you know, it really fit because we kind of went with an industrial repurposed, you yeah. know, overall feel in that room. And that was exactly, you know, it was perfect. Yeah. On top of that sits an old antique window mm-hmm. that uh, so it all kind of just goes. It looks like a little window box yeah. you know, for an old... Uh, old antique window. So there's an idea for how to do uh, something with it other than what you did with it. Okay. Do you have any other ideas for these? Yeah, I would actually use them. I would go and I would attach them to the underside of a table. You can make like an industrial table Mm -hmm. and use them, you know, for holding drawers, for drawers, for like pens, pencils, you know, stapler, things like that, that you would normally have, you know, in a desk drawer. I would just Mm -hmm. repurpose them as drawers, but on a desk. I think I would, uh, I take them out and I would attach them to the wall Mm -hmm. vertically Mm -hmm. and I would put little porcelain kitty figurines inside of them. And Kitties that are dressed that. as clowns holding balloons. Okay. And maybe on one leg. Okay. Would you like me to demonstrate? No, could, I'm I could, good. I could stand up and demonstrate. Keep talking. I'm drinking. Um, <laughs> but No, I, I wouldn't do the porcelain kitties holding balloons uh, dressed as clowns standing on one leg um, while sipping Chardonnay with their paw um, and one little pawlet out. Anyway, I, I think that could. I think I can do that. But I would do it. I, I like that idea because I think they do look pretty neat. But you could put. It's like almost like a. It's like a memory box, but yeah. it wouldn't be a permanent memory box. It'd be something you could interchangeably put things in and out of. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it'd be almost like a floating shelf. Mm-hmm. Is essentially what it would be, and get it in there, and just the the the, the curvature of the drawers and all that really worked nice. Yeah. To be a neat piece, um, and if you have an odd number, you can make that work. You sure can. So it's it's kind of a piece that no matter what state it's in, uh, it can work well. Um, someone suggested here, Katie Underwood said, with squirrel sweaters. I yeah. agree. So the the uh, the sweaters wearing swirls. Or... No, no, the, the, the cats are the cats squirrels. are wearing squirrels squirrel sweaters. That's hard to say. Cats wearing squirrel squ- <laughs> sweaters. Okay. Cats wearing squirrel sweaters. Cat, say it three times fast. No. Ready? I've go. No, I've had too much wine. I can't say that. <laughs> You've had like a, a sip and a half. I've had cats wearing time. squirrel sweaters. Cats wearing squirrel sweaters. Cats wearing squirrel sweaters. Good Bam, for you. Did it. You get a cookie. Boom. Drop the mic. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Katie, for that. I appreciate it.
appreciate that. Um, okay, let's go to our next item. Okay. Uh, actually, let's go to it's a, it's a space. It's not necessarily an item. And I like this because this reminds me a lot of the basement I had uh, in, in the first house uh, that I was uh, mm-hmm. growing up until I was about three or so. And we did we did nothing with it. It was dark. It was dank. And I remember I would ride my tricycle around in circles Okay. down there. And uh, at one end of it, my mom put up a, a Wheel of Fortune wheel because mm-hmm. I loved Wheel of Fortune. Mm-hmm. Mainly, I liked watching Vanna White. I was a little boy. She was pretty. And um, I, I went around in circles and I'd, I'd hit, go over to the wheel and I would spin it and stand there and go, big money, big money. And then I'd go and drive my trick around. <laughs> this is this is me when I was three. This is the three-year-old version of Tony. Just this kind of okay. neurotic as I am now. Um, but okay, here's the space. There's a lot that you can do with it. Yes. Um, now let's describe the space for yeah, those for listening. It. Okay, this... I would venture to say is the basement of a very old home. And the mm-hmm. reason I say that, it looks like there are real wood beams as far as the support structure. And all the walls are stone. And is the floor dirt or concrete? It is concrete. Okay, so it's got a concrete floor. That's good. But all these exterior walls are stone. And there are no interior walls to speak of. You just have all, you know, you've got the furnace yeah. and all the uh, utility equipment there in the middle of the room. It's a basement. Um, this reminds me of like an upper uh, Midwest basement, Wisconsin basement, Minnesota basement, probably down to mid Illinois and the, like the upper part of the country basement where you have that stone type of basement that was built. This is probably what, 1930 and later? Ish. Or earlier. Or earlier. Yeah. Some of the earlier ones are a different type of rock, okay. I believe. But it just depends. Yeah. It depends on where sure. in the country it is. Yeah, yeah. But my only question is how low are the ceilings? Because a lot of times the mm-hmm. old basements like that have really low ceilings. Sure. So with that in mind, you're going to want it for primarily like sitting. You're not going to want to do a lot of standing activity mm-hmm. where you feel like you're going to hit your head. So sure. it would be good just to... Add some, you know, some sheetrock there around the utility mm-hmm. items and make seating areas. Now, I don't know how cold those basements get with the stone walls. Mm-hmm. So that might be something else to consider framing around as well. But, you know, just trying to finish it out, it has, you know, the, the beginnings of a rec room. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of, uh, it, there's a lot of things that are unknown just by sure. the picture. The number one thing you have to do with a space like this is, especially if you're brand new to the house, f- figure out what the moisture issues are. Yes. And really, before you jump into this thing and start going, I'm going to put walls up and I'm going to mm-hmm. do this and that is, does it leak at all? Do right. you get a heavy rain? Does it start coming through the walls? Because mm-hmm. that does happen in in uh, structures like this sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. It just gets kind of... Uh, musty, you know, and, and, right. and you get that. And then dehumidifiers and correct ventilation can correct them. You can make it a functional space. I really do totally, you know, celebrate these walls and use these walls. Uh, yeah, and, I and would too. I love them. If if at all possible. Uh, if there's a way to seal them, I, I would go for that. I don't know. I, I've never done that. I, I don't mm-hmm. know how to do that if there that has been a possibility without having to take them all the way down. And at that point, you're losing so much of the character of the basement. But if there's a way to use the the the, the brick walls of that era, I would totally do that. And I'd make it kind of in an industrial-esque themed basement rec room. Okay. And because and, and there's a lot of piping here, there's a lot of HVAC ducts going here and mm-hmm. there that yes, you could drywall around and kind of hide them well, if you wanted to. But I think there's a way of, of, of interweaving that mm-hmm. with with the way the walls work already and having some of that exposed i would say the stuff in the ceiling the piping mm-hmm. and and tubing i would have that yeah. exposed in the ceiling but i would want to sheetrock around that yeah. if i'm going to use that as a rec room because yeah. kids i'd hide will the rain, kids. i would hide the the furnace I yeah would, but i would hide i don't know necessarily i would hide the tubing that moves into the rooms no i, I would say yeah put a little you know, furnace room essentially Mm -hmm. around the furnace. But a lot of it, I think you can really, you know, use some of that. And something that we saw the other night in one of the uh, home improvement shows was the use of uh, really just spraying the ceilings. 
They painted the ceilings black. Yeah. Everything, you know, all the ductwork, mm -hmm. all the structural, everything was just painted black. So that was the finished look. And and to me, it, you know, is very industrial. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's my taste, but mm -hmm. I could see, you know, in the right in yeah. the right situation, it being the way to go, because some of that's just going to be so hard to conceal. And, and this would be, I think, the right sort of situation yeah. where it's kind of it's it'd be difficult to make it perfect, but it's a way you kind of utilize what you have and, and make what you have work with what you're doing. And, and then within that confine, it's really what are you into with a rec room? I just make it fun down there. Put a pool table in, put a, uh, a shuffleboard table mm -hmm. or, or something, a foosball, whatever. Uh, maybe a little bar, um, TV, some nice, fun little sitting area. You could easily probably on this on a, the wide wall here, uh, you could put a, a projection screen up and shoot to it. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of things you could do. You could in, suspend in it. Yeah. You don't want it projecting onto the rocks. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you, you would either need like a pull down. Yeah. Uh, something like that would probably be the best bet. But there's a lot of of possibilities here with these older older basements, as long as they don't get too wet. That's the thing. Yes. And I, I got to stress that because I know a lot of folks, they're jumping into their fixer upper house that they've always wanted. And they're thinking, oh, I'll do this in the basement. Great. Give it a year on the basement mm -hmm. remodel, unless you know for sure what's going to happen there. Right. Don't you agree? I do, and there are companies that do go in and waterproof basements. Sure. So that's not out of the question. I have no idea mm -hmm. what something like that would cost sure. or entail, but it, it is a possibility. Yeah, it, it is a possibility, and, and if you do it right, you're good. Mm -hmm. But that is step number one before you jump into any sort of basement project with an older basement, make sure it is waterproofed. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you don't know what could possibly happen. So thank you for that one. And if you guys, like I said, if you guys have any ideas for these spaces, please join in in the comments here on Facebook Live as we're doing this live this evening. We'd love to uh, get your feedback and your comments, and we will uh, read them off as we continue through the broadcast this evening. And if you guys are watching here right now, if you don't mind, if you got uh, two seconds, Press share on this feed. That would help us tremendously. Other folks will then find us and we'll have more people to join in on the conversation. Okay, this is kind of a fun one. And I knew, Jenny, when, when I, I, uh, I sent this to you, <laughs> you were going to be like, what the hell is that? No, I know what that is. That looks like a leftover wall decor item from Red Lobster is what that is. It really does, doesn't it? I didn't even think of that. It's, yeah. it's essentially a fake fish on a board. With lots of you know, neat lettering that makes mm -hmm. it look like it's old, but it's not. I bet it is from a Red Lobster. It probably is. <laughs> probably from an old closed down Red Lobster. If you want to repurpose it or not, you can, you know, you can repurpose it or you can go dump it on the front steps of a Red Lobster and, you know, <laughs> see if they put it up. I think that would be kind of fun. I found this. I, I caught this. This right. is your catch of the day. I'll trade cheddar this for Cheddar Bay Biscuits, yeah. you know. What I thought with this the first time I saw it was like, okay, you got this in your garage. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an oddity. It's weird. It's large. But you know what I, I like about it is the wood. Yeah. I, I like the, the shape of the wood. I like the kind of retro signish mm -hmm. design of the wood. I don't necessarily care for all the lettering on the wood, and I certainly don't care for the fake fish on the wood. But you essentially have a nicely cut piece of uh, signage that you could make something fun out of. And, yeah. and my thought immediately was rip the fish off, mm -hmm. black chalk paint, mm -hmm. and either you could make this a neat little sign in your kitchen where everybody can kind of mm -hmm. write on it and use it like as a chalkboard. Sure. Uh, or if you want to put a, a saying of some sort on mm -hmm. there, you could get it, you know, sketched kind of into there on a very unique piece because it, it, what we're looking at here is almost looks like, like shiplap planks um, rectangle at the bottom slight dome at the top um, so it's unique with a big ugly fish with in a, the middle yeah big ugly fish in the middle but that, that can go away I have no use for the fish I don't think um, unless you know just scaring people right. randomly just take it in the middle of the night there's a fish in someone's bed you just hide it play hide the fish hide the fish okay. that, that's, a, that's a game we used to play when I was a kid um, no, the fish does not sing. Peggy. <laughs> Peggy's joined in. It does not sing. 
Oh, the idea of a headboard for a bed. If it's big enough, it would be a cute headboard for a twin bed. Twin, yeah. I think yeah. a twin would work with the fish on it. So no. the kid looks up at night and, oh my God, it's a trout. Uh, it's not a trout. Now, no. I've actually made one of those saying signs. And what I did was I painted a board all one color, used a vinyl lettering. You can get any saying you want in vinyl letters. Either somebody can make it for you off of mm -hmm. Etsy or you can find some, you know, off the shelf at a craft store. And then after you've painted it one color, you put the vinyl letters on and then you paint it a second color. Mm -hmm. And once it's all dry, you pull the vinyl letters off and the original color shows through and, you know, and has your saying on there. I've made a sign like that and I agree. I would use the wood and repurpose the wood. It would be great for like a, a family sign, you know, with a family name or something, mm -hmm. or, you know, a welcome sign, depending on how big it is. If it's obnoxiously large, then maybe not. But mm -hmm. it could be really, you know, a fun, you know, family name established in the year kind of project. Mm -hmm. What yeah. about just getting rid of the sign and chalk painting the fish and putting the family name on the fish and hanging the fish? No. I have no idea what to do with a fish like that i would uh i would get like a chandelier hanger mm -hmm. and get it lodged into the fish and then the electricity going out to the mouth put a light bulb in the fish's mouth and then just hang the fish as a chandelier and it just is one light bulb with a light bulb going out of his mouth. you can do that in your office if you want that would be fun okay you do that'd that. be really kind of funny for like a uh like a little workroom or something uh -huh. if i had this piece i might do that for like a workroom like what is your oh my god yeah. It's like, yeah, it's from some weird project. Okay. There you go. <laughs> There's some ideas on what to do with the weird fish board. Uh, so if you have a project, an idea, or a, a space, or a place, uh, or an object you want some advice on, uh, do submit it to us on the website, junkinwithjenny.com. All right. You ready for this one? This is one you said to me earlier. I don't know what that is. I honestly have never seen one of those. And so when I saw that at first, this I is thought... modern. At first, I thought it was a primitive, like, first generation type hand crank washing machine. You know what? There, there are some similar to this. That's what I thought yeah. it was. But then you told me it's yeah. some, it's a type of butter churn. What we're looking at here is a barrel that's on a stand mm -hmm. that has a churn on the side. Um, and it is technically an old style. Uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's the modern version of the, the of butter, the butter churn. churn. You know, that you had the... Right, yeah. had the, the pot with the stick. On the and, porch. And, and you had to punish your kids, yeah. making them churn butter. Exactly, which we do in the summer months. No. Um, but that, this is, uh, it's a step up with this thing, what you do with it. And it looks almost like a whiskey barrel, kind of, uh, like a half or a smaller mm -hmm. version of it. Um, and there's a crank on the side, and it, it, it's the modern of technology of a pulley system in there that uh, churns it a little bit more efficiently. And you being from the dairy state would know this. I've never seen one of those in my life. I didn't know what the hell it was when it was sent to me. <laughs> oh, I said, the truth like, comes out. I, I saw it and I said, uh, is that uh, washing? Uh, the washing machine was the first thing I thought. Yeah. Yeah, because that is kind of what I went to. Um, but no, it is, in fact, something that uh, that turns butter. And Christina, who's watching right now, says turns butter. Question That's mark. right. Wow, I was right. Yes, you were. So this is a, a, an interesting, neat piece. And it's a great piece if you own a Cracker Barrel and you want to set it in the entryway. <laughs> and everyone can go, that's amazing. Look at this old piece of craftsmanship. If, if you don't own a Cracker Barrel or a rustic restaurant, I don't really know what functional use you'd have of it in its current state at your house, unless you just have a bunch of antiques everywhere. Even then, this show is about repurposing things. So how yeah. would you repurpose it if you so wanted to? I think the focus of the repurposing would be the barrel. Um, it would probably end up as some sort of table. I don't know that I'd want to cut it just because, you know, it, it, it's unusual to find barrels like that all in one piece. You find cut barrels, you know, at the hardware store every spring mm -hmm. for planters. I think I would try and use it all in one piece. Okay. And I I think I would just use it as is, as a table. How would you do it as a table? Exactly. I mean, because it's a taller... Well, well, well I would, no, actually, you know, it's shorter than I, I'm I thinking. I would take it off the stand and just use okay. just the barrel. So the stand goes away, right? And then just use it like as a like a little coffee table, like a barrel type coffee table, or an end table. Remove some of the hardware off the top. 
Yes. It okay. could even be, you know, a nightstand depending on how tall it is. Mm-hmm. I could see that. I, I wouldn't cut into it. I mean, you have a lot of metal holding this thing together. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would use it as some sort of, I think, of outdoor furniture. Um, and, and probably along the lines of what you're talking about, like an end table or a yeah. side table. You could even, um, it, depending how you could stabilize it, if you don't want to... The thing is, if you put too big of a piece over the top, you want glass to really see the mm-hmm. the actual wood. Otherwise, it just becomes this well, stand that you don't even if see. If you take the hardware off the top, do you even need a top? I mean, it has a top. It doesn't. No, I mean, that, that's where I'm thinking you could almost make it even wider than just an end table. You could do mm-hmm. a small coffee table on this thing um, in front of... Uh, a patio set, mm-hmm. you know, like a lower sure. sitting pad, like a couch type patio set, and and it would it would really look neat. And there's a lot of ways to uh, to make that work. That's really all I think I would do with it. I mean, you could go pretty crazy if you wanted to and chop the thing up. Um, there, I mean, in theory, I could see this kind of being a neat wall piece of mm-hmm. just weird wall accent if you can cut straight through the metal without like damaging it yeah. to like get all boat or something and then just putting half and half on a wall and having two pieces kind of um you know side not necessarily side by side but Mm -hmm. uh, what what am i looking for we're like one's here and one's there just adjacent adjacent to each other higher and lower and uh that could look kind of fun but i think your best use is probably just as a table i would think it's probably worth some money I, it's worth is. a lot of money, actually. Yeah, uh, I've looked these up, and that's the thing. If if you if you happen to happen to like come across this as a a, a gift mm-hmm. or something, uh, yeah, they go for quite a pretty penny. I mean, it's not from what I saw online. Uh, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a piece. So if you want to cut into yeah. it, know that that's what. You, what's what you're cutting into? And, and that's something we we talk about quite a bit is when we find objects mm-hmm. that you know, do have quite a bit of value as is, but you can't figure out what Mm -hmm. to do with it. You know, maybe don't do anything Mm -hmm. to it. Try and rehome it. Um, Well, just unless you, you know, are emotionally committed to it because of, you know, whatever. And that's what I think a lot of it is. Mm -hmm. And, And rehome if you want, but I think a lot of times people are connected to items. Yeah. And they don't have a place for it, but they also don't have it in their heart to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I always say, okay, we're not talking about money here. This is not about money. It's about the emotional connection to the object. Right. And and if you can find a way to make that object work for you Mm -hmm. and and, and you can still see it. And I know I use the the term celebrate too much. I've got to find a different word. But to... To use it in your home and see it and reminisce over it. Okay. Um, that, I, I think, is, is that's priceless, as the Visa it commercial is. would go. And, and that's where I think finding those things and using them like that is neat. And that's why I really like what we do in the show. It's not so much about, damn, you got a gold mine there. Well, I know. But the thing is, I know my loved ones that have passed on, mm-hmm. if they passed down something to me that obviously had some value to it and sure. I really didn't want it, they would want me to oh, yeah. find a home if where... If you don't want it. Yeah. But I think a lot, of, like I said, a lot of times there's these objects where it's like, I really like this, but I don't know what the hell to do. Okay. I just, I don't advise cutting into something that's worth $800 as it is. I don't, yeah. unless this is something where it's like, damn, I remember sitting on the porch when grandma was churning butter back in 1989, which is what our children would say the year was when those sort of things happened. No. Oh, I think depending on who you're talking to, tonight I was in the other room and I had a, a piece of art that I had purchased at an auction in 2008 or Mm 9 and uh harp goes how old is this thing and it's an older look it looks old Mm -hmm. it was made to look old uses old newspaper and stuff it's a neat little collage piece and um and she goes how old is this i said probably 10 years old oh my god 10 years old (laughs) so the perspective on time is a little yeah it is so 1989 would be you know Sure. (laughs) All right. Let's move on to our next object here. Um, And uh, this is uh, an interesting one. This is, uh, oops, let me just pull it up as itself by itself. What we're having here uh, is an older, this is like a a radiator type cover piece. Mm -hmm. And this is not the old in the corner. How, How do you describe the old ones with the 
the the the the water that goes up and down that it looks like a metal accordion yeah that's a great way of describing it this is not the metal accordion radiator no this is pretty it's just a big old piece that has uh, very ornate designs on it. It's almost, the, the designs on it almost look like something that would be on a floor vent that comes yeah. up. But it's much larger than that. Um, but there's a lot of ornate uh, design on the front of this thing. It's a big old white piece uh, and pretty big. It's about the size of like, uh, I would say, uh, you know, it's, it's almost too small to be cabinet size, but uh, only by maybe a foot. So dimension-wise, what do you think in terms of feet? I'd say it's probably about two and a half feet tall, and lengthwise, you're probably looking about eh, three or four feet long. Okay. So it's an odd, odd shape, mm -hmm. odd low height. What do you do with something like this and the weird ornateness of it? Um, I really like the idea of taking the piece off the top that has the detailed uh, it's it's like it's metal that's been cut out so it's i don't know how you describe it let me look at it closer it's ornate and i would cut it out of that piece and mm -hmm. i would use that actually framed as a piece of wall art mm -hmm. just in its completely you know enameled chipped away yeah. state it's 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 really, really pretty. And then I can't tell how much of that is underneath that top piece that has more of that cut out. Mm -hmm. If it's completely the whole side of that or if that's just one little sliver there. But I would cut them out. I would cut them off of the metal. And I know that that'll take, you know, some power tools to do that. But I would keep that, that decorative part. I agree. I would take the the decorative faceplate off of this thing because it, it's all metal. It's kind of got the um, porcelain look to it. I think this might be porcelain made. Um, and and I would hang it on the wall. I, I would possibly maybe do some rustoleum paint on it if I want to to give it whatever color I'm going for in the sure. room. But it, it's it's a neat piece. Another thought that I had for it was too. This would really create. Um, a very neat shadow or cast a very neat shadow across a room. Mm -hmm. If you got a, a, a kind of a dimmer piece of lighting behind it, mm -hmm. I could see that being just kind of a neat little low lighting piece in the corner of a room um, to shoot it up and, and just the ornateness of it. You could put this as a piece of furniture in your room in the corner and use this as a very low lying shelf. Yeah. Um, maybe put a plant on it, mm -hmm. but then have the lighting inside of it and then the lighting shooting up. I'd probably to flip it but um, letting that just kind of shoot out into a, a broad spectrum of the room, you'd have this kind of ornate, almost gothic-like, uh, it reminds me of kind of like a church uh, window. Yeah, it kind of looks like a stained glass yeah. could be in it, but obviously there's no glass involved because yeah. it's designed for heat to come through it. Yeah, so I, I would probably go with something like that uh, to make it uh, have that sort of a look and that sort of a shadow or cast that sort of a shadow. Uh, across the room. Uh, it's a neat piece. It, it really is. I'm sure it's heavy as hell as well. Yeah. I would imagine that that's going to be, you're going to want to move it once yeah. and that's it. And Christina said, I'm sorry, Star said uh, earlier, oh my God, I totally misread the title of this uh, this live broadcast. I thought it said Drunken with Jenny <laughs> for a moment. Hey, yeah. next podcast. <laughs> so, no. there you go. Uh, top piece as is, says JC. Turn mm -hmm. it into a tabletop with glass plate on top. Yeah. I like that idea, but the thing is, there's a piece of this that's at an angle. So I guess if you took that piece off, if that piece below the piece that's at an angle has the same ornateness all the way through, mm -hmm. I completely agree. It's just I don't know right. what we're looking at here until we actually were to be actually dissecting it. Mm -hmm. So good idea, uh, JC. I, I, total, I, I do totally agree with that idea. It's just... I don't know what's below that once you once you open that up. Feel free to comment, everybody, on the uh, the objects and the uh, spaces that you see as we talk about them here on uh, the uh, live broadcast tonight. Um, let's go to our next uh, object here. This right here would be old suitcases. And these are the old school hard top. You knock on them. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a lot uh, uh, of security with them. There's, right. Whatever you put in this thing is not going to get beat up. Right. And I love them stacked as a table. And I know I go to table a lot. 
but mm -hmm. you know you always need tables sure but if you stack them you know in succession you know largest to smallest you could actually you know run a support through it to kind of hold them together mm -hmm. you know and and use some bolts to hold it together uh, I don't know that glue is going to be stable enough to glue them together, but I, mm -hmm. I like them that way. I think like a, like a metal rod or something mm -hmm. through it to almost like a like a plumbing. Like yeah, how we've been building tables before. Right, and we but built our studio. And such. This is just for mm -hmm. sandwiching them together. Yeah, so you're gonna have to you know they're never gonna be suitcaseable again. You're right, but you could totally use them that way, and that's totally what I was going to say to do. <laughs> but uh, you're, we'll you're, go figure. But you're exactly right. I love that look. I love these old things, and I feel so guilty because years ago I used a whole bunch of these in a Halloween mm -hmm. scene. I think I've talked about that before. Yeah, um, and they're. They're, they're hard to come by. When you do come by them, they're pricey. Mm -hmm. I think I bought them for like three, four bucks at the time in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, but now these things go for, you know, good, good money. Make a smaller one into a fairy garden scene, says Peggy. Okay. I'm all about I fairy could see gardens. That. Although, wouldn't that get kind of, is this going to be an outdoor one that I would think they would get a little uh, a little musty. Yeah. After, after a little while. I suppose you could... Uh, you could seal it off with. with you something. could. Uh, just make sure the kids don't close them. Yeah, because that could be an issue if children shut themselves in these suitcases. That uh, that probably wouldn't work out very well. Cat beds, says Stacy. That's not a half bad idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. These would be great, just pet beds in general. Uh huh. Uh, you could put furniture feet on the bottom, yeah. get them up a little bit off the floor, fix it to where the lid's not going to close on the cat or yeah. the dog. You know, don't want any of that happening. You could even probably take the top part off if yeah, you wanted, but you that could. would be really cute. You could almost get two pet heads out of one if you wanted to. That's a great idea. I like that a lot. Uh, thank you, Stacy, for mm -hmm. sharing that that idea with us. Okay, uh, one more space here that they need some advice on, and this is just everybody has these if you have a, a home with a little bit of a, a deck out there. This is just kind of your open-ended wooden deck um it's got some fencing uh, across the the edges of it uh it is solid wood fencing across the edges about uh you know chest height um and it's gothic yeah. um you know pickets yeah. on it so they're really kind of cut ornate yeah. really it's a little cute. Bit worn of a deck i'd say mm -hmm. maybe the deck's 10 15 years old maybe yeah um what do you do just with an open space deck like this that's i don't know what would you say the dimensions of this would be um you know, it's probably 16 by, I'm guessing, about 12, because okay. I'm guessing that's probably eight feet there between those posts. So you just moved into a brand new house. You got this little open space deck. What's, mm -hmm. What do you do with it? Oh, I was excited when you had this picture for me because a good power washing does wonders, and that's a given to get all the gray and weathered off of there. What I would do, because of the fence that surrounds it being mm -hmm. so ornate, I would kind of play off of that antique look I would paint the fence. I know it's a pain, but it's going to tie the whole look together. Paint the fence, mm -hmm. you know, white picket fence. And then I would actually paint the deck and I would paint it in a checkerboard fashion. And when you do that, it kind of has this whole, you know, antique kitchen floor look. Mm -hmm. And it would be just a really cute setting for, you know, sitting, um, you know, any kind of outdoor table and chairs. How, how do you achieve the checkerboard? Well, you've got to tape it off, and then you can do it a couple of different ways. You can do two different colors of stain, um, and you want them close in, in color tone. You don't want to do black and white. That's too busy and too stark. I would actually paint the whole thing kind of a, you know, a slate blue, okay. and then maybe do an a white checkerboard pattern on it, and then mm -hmm. kind of you know, sand spots to where it looks like it's worn and then completely seal it. And just, you know, you can do two really light colors and, and it kind of plays off each mm -hmm. other, but it, it would look so cute with that picket fence. Furniture? Yeah. Or does it just end right there? It's this no. checkerboard and then you go out there and it's like... Obviously, you're going to want furniture, <laughs> but, you know, furniture... It, it, Rocking chairs would be adorable on it sure. if you don't have rocking chairs, you know, just about anything. It was more so just preparing the space for whatever furniture sure. you do have. Sure. But that's how I would play off of that fence because I don't think you're going to want to 
you know, change out the fence posts. You could, if you mm -hmm. wanted to go more modern, you could cut those fence pickets off. Mm -hmm. If it's your fence, if it's yeah. your neighbor's fence, then you gotta yeah. ask permission before you do anything and probably just leave it alone. But if you wanted to make it modern, cut the ornate part off of there mm -hmm. and then maybe not do the checker pattern and maybe just, you know, paint it all one color or stain it all one color. I would say at the very least you do the, uh, the, the cleaning of the deck mm -hmm. with the, the wash. And don't just power wash. They make uh, all these uh, concoctions now to help really get it. Get it. Mm -hmm. So get one of those. Don't just do the water alone. Trust me, I've attempted that. And then I went back and bought the other stuff and went, oh my God, this is night and day yeah. what it does. So get it nice and clean. I like your colors. I like those ideas. Um, I was always thinking just more um, in terms of what do I put on this deck okay. once I get there. And one of the things that uh, we've personally found in the last couple of years um, from moving around a little bit is uh, some of the patio sets that are out there that how really kind of realistically affordable they can be. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just go to... I would honestly say most times don't go to the patio and garden store. That's going to be the most expensive place in a lot of areas. Yeah. Um, but typically, check out Amazon, things of that nature. Amazon or Wayfair, yeah, check your, stock. Yeah, check mm -hmm. your reviews. Make sure what you're getting is highly reviewed. Um, but you can get a real nice outdoor like kind of couch, uh, the, the it's, lounge. It's a modular sectional. It, yeah, it's a modular sectional. Mm -hmm. And it all comes in, you know, with your cushions and all that. And it's outdoor ready and outdoor proof. Um, the other thing I would say on that is be cautious on your measurements of what the, the measurements of the cushions are. Because we did buy one <laughs> that we really like. We love it. But we can't find any damn cushions to match that size. And they're kind of getting beat up. Then we got another one uh, for a, a different deck, but that one, the, it's more of a uniform size. So try and make sure you check your sizes on those cushions. Trust me, you'll you'll think me on that one later. But the um, what you can get these things for, you can get a nice set for under $1,000. Yeah, you, you really can, can get you can get a nice, decent yeah. set for under $500. You can, because a lot of times these things, when you see them, like in the patio stores or, or on the... Whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I think the impression and, and it was for me a lot of times thinking, oh, my God, it's like two, three thousand dollars for a good one. And it doesn't. No, have to be. it does not at all. There, no. there are so many good ones for affordable prices. And there are companies and I'll mm -hmm. just throw this out there. It's not supported by Pier One or anything, but Pier One mm -hmm. makes one that's designed. You buy a little bit now, mm -hmm. maybe next year you buy a little bit more and they have the same set year mm -hmm. after year and you can add on to okay, it. Yeah. So it, it's. It's sure. easier and smaller bites sometimes than buying yeah. the whole thing all at once. Sure, but I would go with something like that, a modular sure. kind of corner set um, for a patio. Because I, I love sitting outside on our deck. And and also what I, we've done on, on our deck, and if this were my deck, what I would do is I would go to an antique store uh, or a repurposed store or a uh, reclaimed store, a, a Goodwill, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Craigslist, whatever. Uh, find an old armoire, mm -hmm. uh, and and you can repurpose a great old armoire. And not a lot of people want armoires anymore, although they will probably again soon. Probably. Um, but if you can get a nice sturdy one, they're going to be heavy as hell. So you need a couple of friends to get this to wherever your destination is. Um, those make lovely TV caps. If you have to have TV outside, I need to have TV. And he I, has I love to outside. have TV outside. I I enjoy outside. outside. Sure, but at, at nighttime to sit outside sometimes just to to watch The Walking Dead amongst squirrels and nature and wolves. That's kind of fun. But I like having a TV outside. If you want to have a TV outside, it's fun in fall. You can watch your games or if whatever. If that's your thing, yeah. Now, but this does not look like it's covered at all. So it's not covered, but... I wouldn't advise it. I, I would only advise it if you have a nice, good, whatever you do to that armoire, uh, really seal it up well. Uh, I would seal that wood with something else, because these are indoor pieces of furniture. But if you can really seal the hell out of it with mm -hmm. something, you can give it some outdoor life. Or there may be a... Who knows? There's a ledge or something over this. If you have a little protection from the rain, that's what you need. Um... And we'll just say that's his idea. That's not, my not idea. Not mine. But I would, I love it. It's great. It's wonderful having a, and the thing is, televisions, you can get a nice 
I don't know. We've talked about outdoor TVs with the last decking space, so we know you love your yeah, outdoor TVs. Yeah, I love TVs. them, yes. yes. But you can get a decent one for a decent price, and, and then just go and use like a, a Roku or something to uh, to get your stuff. So I would go with something like that. Another thing I would do uh, is probably, in in lieu of the coffee table, mm -hmm. do just one of those gas propane tables. We, sure. We, we, we got one recently, and we love it. And it's I'm, I wish we would have had one years ago. Yeah. It's so convenient no smoke no worrying about stuff blowing off into the mm -hmm. the forest to start a forest fire or anything of that nature you know something that can be done you know pretty easy mm -hmm. is get a couple strands of the outdoor lights the cafe lights that they had they look like they're edison bulbs but they're actually plastic and they are designed for mm -hmm. heavy duty usage in a restaurant patio mm -hmm. area and you could string it along the fence there and you can leave those up year round they're weather resistant the cold won't bother them as long as you read the box and make sure that that's specified on the box i know they make them because we put some on our deck and i think i got ours at home depot mm -hmm. Uh, but that's a really easy way to add some lighting out there that, you know, it doesn't come on automatically. You've got to plug it in, but yeah. it's nice. And the thing is, uh, what I thought when we, because we strung basically the entire deck, like if you did this whole thing. Yeah. And when we first did that, I thought this is going to be too bright. Mm -mm. We turned it on. It was perfect. It was just enough. It's like all these little Edison bulbs hanging mm -hmm. out. And so... Uh, don't get too overwhelmed by how many light bulbs you're hanging because it is kind of intimidating with how big they are yeah but they they really do, do but a, they're not designed job. to be runway lights you no. know they're just yeah. they're designed for that specific purpose so they probably have taken into account how many lumens they produce yeah, exactly i completely agree jc says i'd say clean it up stain all the wood add a covered area for seating i i like that leave the rest open for a small potted garden it's a good idea. And I'm actually planning on doing a little potted garden on our deck next year. Which we're going to we'll, build a planter. Yes, a big planter. Do some herbs and, tom and then tomatoes. We're also going to do a slat wall where you can have a hanging herb garden. Mm -hmm. And a hanging movie screen as well. It's interchangeable. <laughs> we'll talk about that yeah. on a future episode of the program. So what do you think? I like the wine here that we had on today's episode. I like the wine the too. Francis, the uh, Merlot. Check these guys out. They have a, uh, a great little... It's going to keep me from being sore tomorrow, I think. It will. Great little uh, nice bonus for our listeners and viewers today. Use code Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y. Yes. I suppose I, I need to specify that because yes. there's a lot of ways of spe spelling it. J-E-N-N-Y at stfrancisswinery.com. Get your shipping included on your order and I suppose if you order pretty soon you can probably get it in time for the holidays I would think to check with them yeah uh, but, I would try uh, for it I would certainly think so so uh, there you go that is today's episode of Junking with Jenny thank you guys for watching thank you guys for interacting with us mm -hmm. greatly appreciate that every uh, Thursday around 8 o'clock join us here and uh, we will be going through junk or what other people think is junk and, and how to give it new life yeah so there you go. Thank there you guys go. for watching. <laughs> Thank you to St. Francis Winery for being our our, uh, our creative juice of the week. I'm Tony Bruschi. That's, I'm Jenny that, Bruschi. That's Jenny Bruschi. Yeah, right I never here. get to say my name. You always say it for me. That's because there's a, a radio show that used to do that when I was a kid. Okay. And I make fun of them horribly. And they would go, I'm the... I'm the... And we're the... Blah, blah. And I won't say their name. Because they may, I think I'm friends with them on Facebook still. So. Be nice. <laughs> but that's how they did their, it was a husband-wife team. <sighs> so I just kind of, anyway. So okay. There you go. Um, that's my wife. <laughs> I'm the husband. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for listening uh, to another episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Be sure to uh, to get on to uh, uh, our website, junkinwithjenny.com, and sub uh, submit your photos uh, and uh, your questions. We may use it on a future episode of the program. Uh, until next time, take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>